Hey everybody. So, um, today I actually, if you all could see my desk here, I love it. This is the actual paper that I covered my desk with. And I did do a tutorial that um, showed how I did that. Uh, and I actually have been needing to redo it. <laughs> Fluffy was jumping off the, the chair in the living room. I was like, oh, what was that? <laughs> but uh, I've been meaning to redo it. I just haven't gotten around to it. So the one thing I did do... Oops. Sorry. The one thing... I did do to kind of make up for that is I made a portable one so in a way it's kind of my lazy fix because um, I really don't want to strip off this entire desk again anytime soon um, and I think when I finally do redo it I might cover it in something else who knows but so I have this portable map or portable mat for whenever I want to um, do filming on top of a project and have a pretty background so I really really love this background and I'm not probably going to change it anytime soon but I thought it would be really fun to have like a mix and match deal and have a couple of different um ones to photograph on top of depending on ranging on whichever project I'm working with so I found this one a while back at Joann's and really really loved it and I thought well maybe eventually I'll cover my desk in this well, instead of, you know, covering my desk in it, I decided to make another mat. So this way I'm going to have two different ones to be able to transition between during filming, photography, any of those sorts of things. And for those of you who are avid YouTubers or crafters and want a beautiful area, but for instance, you know, you have your work desk and you really like keeping your mat out, but you want to film real quick, you can just, you know, your cutting mat for using your rotary knife and your razor knives and stuff like this. Uh, so you can just go ahead and lay this out real quick on top of the mat, film whatever you got to film, pick it back up, and then get right back to work. I was seriously, like, so excited when I figured out this little trick that I couldn't help myself. So, um... Of course, we got this big, huge roll of paper. We got contact paper. It's the same thing we used for the desktop. Um, I am going to probably try and get a hold of a more high-quality contact paper. Maybe I'll go online and see if they have any. And, of course, I always, you know, tape it up real good. That way it doesn't end up all, all wacko in storage. Okay, we got all this lovely tape off of our contact paper. Um, and as you can tell with this one, I actually had the idea of sewing little little ribbons on the sides right here. So that way, you know, you could roll it up. Kind of like those art pencil type bag things. And then tie it up. Well, not on that side, obviously. It'd be on this opposite side. So you can roll it up and it rolls up really nicely. And use this, uh, use the tie strings when you're finished to tie it off. Now, I would have had them sewn on for this video, but in all the crazy to get ready for vacation, I lost them in the living room somewhere. And it's funny because, you know, the living room is not that messy. I just don't know where I put it. <laughs> it's crazy. I set it down somewhere. I do that with my phone all the time. Thank God for Google because if it weren't for that lady, oh my God, my phone would be permanently lost. So, and you know, I don't have a landline, so I can't just, you know, oh, well, you know, let's call our phone and then it ain't happening with me. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're obviously, we're going to lay our paper on the bottom and I want to do the color side down and there's kind of a reason why I'm doing it this way because with the other one I did color side up to start with and it worked fine but for looks wise um you're going to appreciate having it uh the color side down especially if you do not have a sewing machine because if you do not have a sewing machine you're not going to be able to sew along these edges so 
um, it might peel up every now and then and you're just going to have to push it back down or, you know, get some tape and go ahead and tape it down to reinforce it because the contact paper doesn't stick to itself as well as it does to the paper. So now the first thing we're going to do now that we have our contact paper lined up and when you roll it out, the shiny side's going to be up and where it says contact, it's going to be facing the white. Um, I got it all laid out when I was doing the first one and I had it all taped up and the contact paper said contact on top. And I was like, oh, well, um, it looks like our contact paper <laughs> is going to be sticking to me and not the paper. So be sure that your contact, everything that you can read on the contact paper is facing downwards towards your project. So be careful with these pieces of tape. Remember, we are going to have to pull them up right now. This is just to kind of mount the paper so it doesn't move on you. So the contact paper has these wonderful lines and it's amazing. Go away, Mr. Fly, because you can go ahead and I want to fold the opposite direction. So the contact paper should be touching itself or the, the gloss paper that the contact paper is sticking to. We're going to fold it back on this first line so it touches itself. And if you feel comfortable going back to the second line, you know, you're more than welcome to. I have a little itty bitty fruit fly in here. No idea where he's come from. I have no fruit in, that's accessible out in the house. I always keep it in the fridge because I know that if I leave it out, it'll go bad super fast because I keep the house at 77 degrees year round yeah i know for some people it's too warm or too cold depending on the season but I, for me i think it's just it's the perfect temperature there we go Okay, now we want to get a good press on this too, you know, make sure that we can definitely tell the difference on the line. Now I'm going to go ahead and roll out the rest of this and I'm just going to sit my ruler on the paper. I, I knew I spaced something. I forgot to do a tools list at the beginning of the video. That's alright. It's pretty simple. I had them all laying out on the desk, so I hope everyone, everyone kind of got the idea. So with contact paper, um, I know for some people it's really, really difficult to get apart. For me, sometimes it is too. And the best way to get it apart is to take two pieces of tape. I like to start on the corner. We're going to go ahead and put one piece right there on the corner. We're going to hold it. Now we're going to put the other piece and we're going to hold that one and ta-da! We just separated our contact paper. Now we just have to you know, get it off so it doesn't re-stick to everything. You know, that's perfect because now we'll have a little spot to peel it back from. Okay, now remember contact paper is face down. We have our peel ready to go and... I'm just going to take Mr. Bird, my tape, which we will obviously need again. I'm going to set the ruler here to kind of hold everything in place while we remove this tape. Or, no, we're not going to remove the tape. We're going to go ahead and remove the contact paper. Just a little bit, though, you know, nothing crazy, nothing excessive just to that little fold mark and you can kind of you know fold the the plasticky piece the see through plasticky piece back you know so it's just nice and away from the paper and you want to make sure you have um, clean hands before you do that you don't want any random particles sticking to it that you're you're going to see later on down the road. Okay. 
Okay, so this ruler is here so it can hold everything in place and it won't shift while we're trying to do the placement. Um, if you do not have a rotary style ruler, then a it won't work as well, but a school ruler will also work, like, you know, a kid's ruler. Um, and it has to be a solid one because I know I have one of those like wibbly wobbly ones that do timey wimey things. And so uh, definitely don't want to use that ruler. It's not gonna it's not gonna work very well. And I want to turn this around because it has a little broken piece right there. Don't want to get caught on anything. Okay. Perfect. Now just push that piece under and now we can see the contact paper starting to stick out and we're gonna line up the wax paper with the edge of the white paper and have the clear hang off this is gonna help us because now we can mount it to whatever surface we are working with and you'll have a little bit of air bubbles there go ahead and lift a little bit and drop it back down and we'll just work them out seamlessly. Perfect. Now wasn't that wonderful? And now we have a wonderful start for our contact paper. We're gonna roll it back up in its little roll and there's a reason for this. And now we have a perfect start and we're just gonna go ahead and pull on this wax or wax, yeah, wax paper. And of course, make sure all of our oh man it shifted. Poopy. Okay. Well, now we gotta fix it. Okay, it looks like we're we are good to go. All right, well, our contact paper is being a bit of a butt, but that is okay. So we're gonna fold this so we can see what we're doing. And be gentle because you obviously don't want to tear your paper. And we're just gonna pull it back some. And this is also why we have the ruler. So we can hold down the paper as a whole. And we don't want any sharp edges on the ruler. So we can go through and fix these really massive air bubbles. Obviously, go as close as you can. If you have air bubbles, don't end up off the paper. All right, now we're gonna hold our contact paper. We're going to take this ruler, broken side, away from the contact paper. Now, like a credit card, we're going to just push our contact paper down and smooth. Now, the back of this contact paper is pretty rough for some reason, and I don't know why. But that's okay. Um, just go ahead and be... Don't, you know, push as hard as you can. You'll end up with holes in your contact paper possibly even tears all the way down into your um your main paper just be gentle smooth them out they'll flatten out i promise there we go all right look how beautiful that is now we actually i'm gonna have to move my little lamps here because we are going to have to shift this now that we have the contact paper attached. So we need to utilize this entire desk. And I don't need the knife right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in my pocket. So we're gonna lift up starting at the corner and just slowly move across. And look at how beautiful that came out, nice and clean. All right, now we're just gonna shift it across the desk. 
And see, look at that. Now we have plenty of space. I know that my hand over here is nearly out of camera frame. That's okay. Um, I want you guys to know that I am, I can, I know you can kind of see me pushing it down right here. I want you to do that all the way across. Make sure it's got a nice flat, even contact with your surface that you're working on. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna go back to the ruler and uh, we're gonna take our little bird. It's pointed so it's staying, but I'm gonna stick the bird there anyway in case it decides to develop a mind of its own. So now with the contact paper, we're just gonna take and roll it as we go. Now, whichever side of the contact paper that you line up with the edge of your paper, make sure that when you're working with your contact paper and you're moving it, that this, that your, your clear spot and your paper is gliding along seamlessly. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You'll see my feeties. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this edge right here glides along seamlessly with the edge of your paper. That way it'll ensure everything is straight. Don't worry about the top. Don't worry about the sides. We already have this side lined up. That's perfectly fine. Now we're going to make sure that if this, when this starts rolling, make sure that our, our wax paper here stays lined up. See how it's kind of lined up right there? You want to make sure that it stays looking like this and perfect. I will take a picture of it and be sure and post it up. And just go ahead and smooth it over. All right, now that we have that started, the final step, we're gonna lay our contact paper. Now remember what I said. Oh, what happened? Oh no, it's, it's still perfectly fine. I think, yeah, this paper, I cut it a little bit shorter than the contact paper, which is fine. Okay, remember, keep your contact paper lined up here. And we're just going to go ahead and pull and let it do its own work here. It's doing the work for us. Getting it started is the hardest part. All right. Let's go ahead and get this smoothed out. All right, guys, let's pick this up and see what it looks like. We got some bubbles here. I think for some reason the uh, I don't know why, because I lined it up too, but it, I think it pulled some. It's always better to work on a good size surface with this project. So doing it on my filming desk really probably wasn't the best. Yeah, see, I ended up with a tear right there. Doing it on my filming desk probably wasn't the best idea. Because it's just so small. Alrighty, I don't want to cut on my filming desk with a razor knife, so I'm going to go get some scissors. Alright, so we got some scissors here. We're just going to go ahead and gently cut along the edge. And if you have a good pair of scissors, they should just slice right through it real easy. Perfect. And of course the contact paper is now attached to your wonderful, this wax paper can go in the trash. It also works really good for if you're working on painting projects. That's always a bonus. All right, now I don't want to fold this over so I'm just going to cut it off. This little sticky side, it was um, just used to mount our paper and that's it. So let's 
go ahead and get our scissors. All right, and I know that I ended up with a small hole. It was very, very small, but considering the type of, of um, mat this is gonna be, oh, there it is. Um, it'll be an easy hole to cut, it'll, it'll blend in, so I ain't too worried about it. Um, but if you have a lot prettier paper, um, I think part of my problem was because I have some of these imperfections on the surface of my desk. So it's a lot harder, obviously, to go over those with this. Um, make sure your desk is smooth. It'll really help. All right. So now that we've done the back, the front lays out really nicely. And if you're doing this project with me, you can honestly tell that it's it's already doing what you want it to do. And it's it's going to be your best friend right now because it's really liking the way it's feeling with this extra little plastic. So we don't need the scissors. I don't know why I grabbed them. Instead of this line, that's too small. I'm going to go down to where it says five inches. That's the line I'm going to use. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold. All right, don't forget our little tape trick here. One, two, voila! And I'm lazy, so I'm just going to go like this. And tear it off gently. Okay, now remember we're just separating it from this. Make sure your hands are clean, nothing's sticking to it. You know, unless you want little fingerprints or paint splotches on <laughs> whatever it is that you're doing. I think this would actually be really fun to do like a paint project with your kids. Um, and then when you're finished, just uh, laminate it like this and use it as, you could use it as a filming mat, you could, you could even use it as like a, a play mat. I think that would be really, really fun. Because then they could play on their artwork. The one thing I like about it too is it's, it's like water resistant. So, I mean, on the edges, you got to be a little bit careful because obviously I didn't tape off the edges. Um, I, don't, I didn't on the other one because I lined it with fabric. But if you want to take some tape, and tape it off, tape off the edges. I mean, it's waterproof. It should be waterproof. Don't quote me on that. It should be, depending on the quality of your tape. <laughs> okay. Now to avoid any shifting, which I forgot about this one, I'm just going to go ahead and tape this down a little bit. Don't forget about these pieces of tape. We have to pull them up before we come to this contact paper. Otherwise, you're going to have tape inside of there, and it won't seal as good. All right, we're going to move these scissors and get to rolling, 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 rolling. I feel like I'm in Five Ocos West. <laughs> Love that movie. Okay, I'm just going to lay this ruler here. Go ahead and grab this contact paper. Oh, yeah, so much more seamless this time. So much better. Okay, and now I'm going to take this contact paper and I'm going to line it up with the top because I was having issues with the bottom. I think one side of this is a little crooked and I'll have to go straighten it up a bit when I'm finished. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull it and you'll be able to see it a little bit better too. Now that you can see the contact paper against the whatever color it is I got going on here. Vintagey gold gorgeousness. I have no idea what that is. Huh. 
Well, I knew I wiped down this desk when I started, but oh my goodness. It is just not wanting to cooperate. Now, see how I'm keeping it seamlessly right there? And we have a interesting line right here. I don't know why that's there. I know someone who like does this professionally is going to be like, this is why you had it. It wasn't giving me these problems with last night's. Of course, because you're not filming last night. We, we weren't going to give you any problems. But today you're filming? Yeah, we're, we're going to give you all the goods. Yeah, tripod might shift, guys. There we go. Got a couple of big bubbles here. Probably gonna have to pop those. That's okay though. The rest of it, now that I've got it started, it's looking amazing. And just keep it up against the roll. It'll help you from getting all those bubbles as you go. It'll definitely help with that. Alright. Looks like I'm going to be taking pictures on this half. <laughs> uh, Alright, we got this tape up. And I don't know how, but somehow it ended up under my tripod. That is so weird. Okay. I'm probably going to have to lift when I get to that point, guys. Okay. I'm definitely a lot happier with this. Yes. I'll finish smoothing it out in the living room, though, because I have more space out there. You know what? I'm going to shift this some. Um, so let's go ahead. We're just going to lift this. There. That'll keep the tripod from being an issue. That and you guys know, you know, if, if you're having a little bit of difficulty, you can, you can shift it. It's okay. Especially once it's sharp, started, it's a lot easier to move around. Okay, we're going to line it back up. And remember, see how we're keeping it along that line up top? Yeah, and then there's a little extra on the bottom. That is, that is perfectly okay because I did cut it a little bit shorter than anticipated. Okay, this is how it should be going, guys. <laughs> But all of these other bubbles, you're just going to have to, and if you did end up with bubbles, and you could probably actually bring in a credit card and work with that. It'll help you work them out uh, a little bit better because you'll be able to get more up close and personal. All right. Let's fold back this contact paper. I think I got a message. All right. Now we got our contact paper folded back, and we're going to take our ruler and go again. The lady for the Triangle Journal finally contacted me. She had been having a most terrible week, and then she realized, she finally sat down, I guess, and watched the video after her terrible week. Well, would you look at that, guys? and realized that she had won. So it, it really made her day. And I am, I'm excited that it did. Um, it, it made my day to know that, you know, after someone had such a horrendous day, they were able to just come home, take a moment, and be able to remember that, you know, the bad comes with the good. And it comes and it goes. So that was just a great blessing. We need our scissors here. I think that would, I think that would be fun. Um, I am not going to officially sew the edges on video. If you guys would like a video on that, 
um, comment below. I will do the video on how I sewed it, but I will talk you through it. That way, if you do know how to sew, then you should be able to do it just off my instructions. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and, and fold this back as all the wax paper falls. Oh, my lordy. And then this is why I wanted to start with the bottom first. Because I started with the top first last time. And this ended up having to fold over on top. And you can see there's kind of a few wrinkles in it. It's, it's not wanting to cooperate. Um, but usually I can get it to cooperate today. It just doesn't seem to be my day. <laughs> I think it's just because I have so much to do and it's like, you know what, I just, I want to be annoying to you because I know, I just know that you have things to do today. Okay. Alrighty. And oh my goodness. Everyone's texting me when I'm filming without fail. And see, it's really easy to peel this contact paper back. So I can redo the other side easy. I think this might have shifted on my cutting board while I was trimming it. That's probably it, why it's co not cooperating. <laughs> Look how pretty, guys. I got a couple of bubbles here I gotta work out, but that is okay. Just, you know, take your, your credit card actually will work a little bit better. This is just kind of like to smooth it all out and get the least amount of bubbles as possible. I had this really ginormous one in the beginning, too, that's now driving me insane. All right. So, if you see on this one, I have this beautiful stitched edging, and I really, really love how it came out. Um, it kind of reminds me of these placemats we had as kids, or you when we used to go to the 99 cent store as kids, and they had nice little placemats, and they had some, some stitching similar to this around them. So I'm going to talk you through how I did that. So I got this thin um, ah, bias tape, I think it is. And this is also not the blue. We're not using the blue. We are using the, the very cream morph caramel color. So what we're going to do is... And when I opened mine up, I realized how small this bias tape actually was. I actually wanted my gap to be about this big. But I wanted a little extra on the edge. And that's when I came up with the green for that one. I was so fortunate I had the aqua. So I put them like this on the sewing machine. And I don't know if you can kind of see through them because, yeah, you can. So right in the middle of this is where you want to sew. And of course you want to measure each side, all four sides, and then add about two inches to your length. So you'll need two of these cut that length. So you know what, let's, let, I know it's uh, 30 inches across the bottom and 18 inches across the uh, sides. So I'm going to do a little bit of math. So that is a hundred inches. We're going to need 100 inches of this in two strips so that'll equal 200 inches and then we'll need another 100 inches in this and when you're finished sewing them you're going to sew this one and you're going to sew right in the middle of the two and then you're going to butt up this one the second one will be easier um because you're just going to butt it up right next to this one and then sew down the second side and it'll look like this when you are finished okay and it'll be super beautiful um when i was done with that the end i folded it over and sewed it down and then when i started binding it to the paper i started back here so this was flapping open like this and then I went all the way down to the corner over here. I don't know if it's in, yeah, it's not in view. So I went all the way to the corner. And when I got to the corner, it was actually a little difficult. I'm going to show you how I did the corner. So I'll actually use this for an example. 
So I folded these over the edge so it looked like this. And when you get to the corner, it's going to be a little difficult. So we're just going to push down like this. And it's paper, so it's going to be flimsy and a little bit harder to work with. You're going to push this under and push this down. And you have a perfect corner. Okay? Boo just walked in the door, so the kids are going crazy. So we're going to push this under and push this down. And you're actually going to use, and I don't think I have, oh, I do, perfect, uh, binder clips. Binder clips are your best friend for this project because you don't want to put needles inside of the paper. And it's held in place by the binder clips. So as close as you can to the binder clip. And also make sure that your tuck, how it's tucked under like that, is in the opposite direction that you're sewing. So you're going to start sewing from this side over here and work your way this way that way your feet don't catch on this and it's going to push them down as you sew you're going to stop obviously drop your needle right there in the corner to hold everything in place and then you're going to turn your knob to pick up your needle you're going to pick up your foot obviously and rotate it and then drop your foot back down and then continue sewing on. Now, if you sew from this direction up, your feet are going to get caught in here. And I know I mentioned that already, but I just want to stress it enough to where you know to fold your little pieces here. Just, you know, hold it up like this. And fold in the opposite direction that you are sewing and then push down. Okay, and then um, after I did, I did the zigzag for the very first stitch. So on, I, it fell. <laughs> so for this, I folded it and I didn't do anything magnificent. I just did the zigzag stitch to make sure it was held in place. And I lined it up with this line right here. That was the center line I used on my sewing machine. And uh, I made sure it was right in the middle. And then after I got done with that, there was some edges of this that were flapping in the wind. And I didn't really like the way it was looking. So I went back in and did a second straight stitch. And it came out beautifully. And then once you're done with that, you can take your tie strings here. Of course, you're going to have two. At least I personally would. You're just going to lay it right here and do a stitch there and a stitch there and it'll be stitched on in two places and you'll have some wonderful tie strings and you can go ahead and it'll be mounted right there you'll do one there and you'll do another here or you can do one in the middle that's fine too and then you'll be able to flip it around obviously and tie them in back so that is our wonderful tutorial for the day. I hope all of you lovely ladies enjoyed it and have a wonderful night. I will see you next week. <laughs>